This is Seven National News and in our top story, the UA Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, inspected the progress made on the construction of the 25,000 metre Union Museum. The site is adjacent to Union House, which witnessed the signing of the treaty, establishing the UA Federation back in 1971. The museum in Jumeirah, being built at a cost of 600 million dirhams, is dedicated to exhibiting the holistic story of the nation's development from the pre-union. The project will also add a new waterfront and a new 123-metre flagpole. Dubai's Road and Transport Authority is supervising the project and the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority will operate the museum when it's complete. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, who was accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Deputy Ruler of Dubai, watched a presentation on various phases of the project and the final outlet of the museum, which will be ready by September and be officially opened during the next National Day celebrations. The museum includes permanent and temporary halls, a theatre, educational and recreational areas, as well as admin offices. And the ruler of Dubai also visited the Dubai International Boat Show, organised by the Dubai World Trade Centre, in cooperation with the Dubai International Marine Club at Mina Siyahi. He inspected locally manufactured boats and the high-tech equipment used by local yacht companies. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed described the show as an important tourist event that attracts many exhibitors and visitors from the region and the world to learn about the culture, heritage and historic landmarks of the UAE. In the presence of the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Mohammed Al Menai, the director of Mina Rashid DP World, announced a plan to build a marina for luxury yachts at Port Rashid. The new project was announced during the visit of the ruler of Dubai to the pavilion of the Customs and Free Zone Corporation in Dubai. Al Manai explained the scale of the marina with its various details, which attracted a large number of visitors to the Dubai International Boat Show. The project comes in response to an increased demand for luxury yachts, and tenders for construction will be invited soon, according to DP World. The first phase of the project is scheduled to open by 2018 with a capacity of more than 400 boats and sailing yachts with lengths in the range of 15 to 35 meters. The second phase will be for luxury yacht berths with a length of more than 100 meters. The UA Ministry of Health and Prevention has ordered the withdrawal of three batches of Omifen 400 milligram tab from the UA markets after small pieces of aluminium were found in some of the tablets. The anti-inflammatory and pain relief drug is produced by Oman's National Pharmaceutical Industries and is a brand for the generic drug ibuprofen. According to Dr. Amin Hussein Al-Amiri, the Assistant Undersecretary for Public Health Policy and Licensing at the Ministry, Action has been taken as the Ministry was alerted by the Directorate General of Pharmaceuticals and Drugs Affairs in Oman. He was quoted saying that the Ministry has ordered to withdraw these three batches as patient safety is our priority and medicines have to comply to international pharmaceutical manufacturing standards. Amiri added that other batches of the same drug are safe to use and noted that there are a number of alternatives. Adnoc Distribution has confirmed that the pilot phase of its Adnoc Smart Self Service will continue to provide the full service option across its four service stations. In a press release, Adnoc said that customers are able to choose the method of service that they prefer, either full service or self service, included in the pilot phase over in the capital. The statement comes as last week the four petrol stations in Abu Dhabi began allowing drivers to fill their own tanks. Adnoc Distribution added that it reiterates its commitment towards providing flexible and convenience service options to its valuable customers. Latifa Hospital conducted over 3,500 paediatric surgeries in 2015, as according to a top health official. The figures were revealed through the Dubai Health Authority's bi-weekly smart clinic, 
where Dr. Gadir Jabba, the senior specialist pediatric surgeon, who is the only female Emirati surgeon in pediatrics in the UAE, said that Latifa Hospital receives one of the highest referral rates for pediatric surgeries, not only from Dubai, but also from the Northern Emirates. Dr. Jabba revealed that last year they conducted 3,972 pediatric operations, of which 1,748 were major. The, re the reasons were for congenital malformation, gastrointestinal cases, urological cases, tumours and burns. She added that Latifa Hospital offers 24-hour surgery services due to a high number of emergency cases and that in 2015 they received 2,282 emergencies. Dr. Jabba added that the hospital conducts a high number of surgeries to correct congenital abnormalities, many of which are detected during pregnancy. 10,000 participants completed a symbolic three-kilometer walk in solidarity with children in developing countries who endure difficult journeys every day to attend school. The UA community joined the seventh annual Walk for Education organized by Dubai Cares on Friday as a part of the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Global Initiatives. The family fun event, whose main sponsors were Chevron Al Khalij and Midas Safety, attracted UA residents, citizens and visitors of all ages to walk the three-kilometer route along the Riyadh Road in Dubai, raising awareness about children in developing countries who walk, on average, three to six kilometers every day to attend school. A lineup of fun activities was also hosted inside the park, including face painting, games, music and fitness. Tarek El Gerg, the CEO of Dubai Care, said that through this level of UA community support, we were able to extend our reach to support a greater number of children in developing communities around the world. It's an annual walk that we have. We've been doing it for the past seven years and it has been successful from day one. So this seventh edition has uh, really caught us with surprise. We, we wanted more community, more members. We plan to go to every single house, every single community member to be involved. And it just rem resembles what, what the children are suffering in developing countries. They normally walk three to seven to, to, to 10 kilometers to go to school. And we want to show that, to showcase how the children are going through this hectic walking just to go to school in, in developing countries to show it to our community members and having a glimpse and to walk almost same distances to feel how they feel like. Well, we work um, in a very uh, sustainable way and in a developmental um, 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 path. We, we provide education, we support governments and ministries of these developing countries by giving them different solution in order to bring children in school to increase their enrollment rates and also to, to provide them with quality. So we build schools, we provide health in schools, we put sanitation and hygiene in schools, but we also do curriculum development, we do teacher training, we focus on literacy, numeracy, to the ch early childhood education, to the lower secondary. So we have different models that we can help governments in order for them to get more children in school and provide them with quality education. And finally, looking to other news now, the Anda Kalova Gallery, formerly known as the Alif Art Gallery, has opened its doors to showcase the works of one of Central Asia's legendary artists, Bakhodir Jalal from Uzbekistan. Entitled Zotik, the gallery is showing a selection of Jalal's abstract works from the last two decades, which represents an important milestone in his career. Winning a number of prestigious awards, Jalal is collected by renowned international institutions, including the British Museum, the Modern Art Museum, the art collections of Buckingham Palace, and many more. According to the owner of the gallery, Ander Kolova is a contemporary gallery with an objective to promote Central Asia's contemporary visual art, providing a platform to exhibit and support emerging to mid-market contemporary Central Asia. Asian artists across a variety of media and with a special focus on Uzbekistan. Bakhodir Jalal's work will be on display at the gallery at Damak Park Tower until the 14th of March.
Ну, во-первых, я проучился. I can say that my formation as a, as an artist began uh, during my studies in Saint Petersburg in the Academy of Fine Art uh, by the name of Rapin. That was the place that also inspired me. That's where I learned my uh, profession, and uh, that's where I met fantastic teachers. And everything in Saint Petersburg, Saint Petersburg, uh, its uh, museums and um, the exhibition and everything that I saw there I became a very good foundation uh, for my uh, art and for my profession. I'm a teacher. It's absolutely uh, natural for me to advise my students and, and any emerging artist to study the art of the old masters because this is the most important thing because I believe that the classics uh, it's the foundation of a very good art and also of course uh, you have to to be uh, very thorough and love your profession uh, because uh, to be an artist it's very uh, demanding but it's very interesting and it gives you a lot of um, satisfaction. I think it's very important to see and to know uh, what is um, kind of available as an art, not just only in Europe, but also to be able to explore different uh, time zones and uh, geographic zones. And Central Asia now is... Um, uh, brings a lot of interest from the art collectors uh, and um, uh, people who love art because the quality of art uh, is very high and there's also uh, got lots of uh, interesting ideas. Um, our gallery is uh, participating in um, the uh, art fairs in Dubai. Uh, next art fair will be World Art Dubai, where we'll be showing to uh, everyone in Dubai uh, every artist that we have in our gallery. Um, I think it will be very interesting to see how people from Dubai react uh, to the art from the Central Asia, but so far we had very good uh, uh, interest and very good, uh, um, how to, a very good opinion about uh, what uh, the art is, um, the art that we are showing in the gallery.